Hello and welcome to our coupled aquaponic construction video. My name is Matt Smith with OSU South Center's Extension Aquaculture Program. Coupled aquaponics is often referred to as the marriage of hydroponics and aquaculture. And aquaculture is generally considered uh, the propagation and rearing of aquatic organisms in controlled environments. And then hydroponics is often just referred to basically as uh, growing plants without soil. Our soil, water, and bioenergy program here at the South Centers, our horticulture program, and our extension aquaculture program have teamed up with the United States' newest land-grant university, Central State University, on a uh, grant investigating aquaponics. This grant is through USDA NIFA's capacity building grant, and we will be investigating the economics, production, and water quality in these systems. Thank you for joining us as we discuss this and uh, the current build that we'll be uh, discussing throughout these series of videos. Thank you. All right, so this is the start of our uh, aquaponic system design. We're located at the OSU South Centers, and we're actually in a greenhouse that is housed with three bays. Uh, we are in the third bay, and so this is approximately about a 23 foot by 25 foot uh, uh, building. Our system design is based on several university research uh, aquaponic systems, uh, most of which stems originally back from uh, a lot of the University of Virgin Islands work that's been uh, being conducted for the last 25 years uh, and kind of modified for what we need it to be. We will have three independent coupled aquaponic systems uh, here at OSU South Centers, and then these same three systems will be set up at Central State University uh, for this grant. We will start here with the fish tanks. Uh, these are uh, polyethylene fish tanks that are 180 gallons full. These are semi-rectangular tanks, so they are not completely round. Uh, they are 180 gallons full. However, with a, a few inches of freeboard with the uh, internal standpipe, we're looking at probably around 145, 150 gallons once it's all said and done. While we're waiting on the center blocks to be brought over for us to elevate our fish tank, we're gonna go ahead and drill holes into each of the fish tanks um, and add bulkheads, inch and a half inches for our center drains for the water to drain out, as well as a, a similar bulkhead in each of the six filters that we're gonna have for this system. Now that all three holes are drilled in our first uh, part of our system, we have the fish tank and the two filters. We added the bulkheads on each side of those, uh, ensuring that we do have the gasket on the uh, inside of the fish tank uh, setting down before it's screwed on. The next step's gonna be the center block's just pulled up. We're gonna lift this fish tank up and then we can actually uh, make our dimensions so that we can start uh, the flow of water from the fish tank to the filter, uh, filtration systems uh, and let gravity do its thing. All right, so we drilled the holes in the bottom of our uh, fish tank and both of our filters. Uh, as we saw just a second ago, added the bulkhead fittings to those. We did go ahead and tighten them down. Next thing we did is the center blocks just showed up. So we added um, a couple of our six inch center blocks and a couple of our four inch ones to give it the, uh, the proper elevation so that this is now the tallest part in our entire system. Once we tightened the bulkheads down, we went ahead and added some PVC. We're using an inch and a half uh, overflow, uh, an inch and a half pipe on most of uh, this system. 
Unfortunately, we did have to tee over because the way this one is designed, our support brace sat exactly where our elbow needed to be. So we just came up just a little bit uh, and then we go into our first filtration system, our first filtration tank, which is our clarifier. We came in the bottom here uh, and we attached that with a unisil, used a little bit of Dawn dish soap to lube it up so we could uh, uh, push this uh, inch and a half pipe into the bottom part. On our next video, uh, which will happen in just a second, we're going to show you how the flow of water goes from the bottom of the fish tank into the first filtration system. All right, so this will be our clarifier tank. Uh, as I showed you on the outside, this is where the unisil uh, uh, was pushed through. What we're actually having, we elbowed up to a 90 uh, for still inch and a half pipe. The water is going to flow out of the fish tank through here and uh, one of the things we'll do after we get this first guy set up is add our baffle here that'll go to about three quarters of the way. So the idea is that when the water bubbles uh, up to the top here it's going to hit that baffle uh, and just like um, a lot of the other systems going to be forced to go down and come over through our exit. All right, so as the water flows out, hits the baffle, goes under and comes through, added another unisil here to connect the filter one to filter two with a second unisil here. We connected these both with inch and a half pipe and now we have a 90 degree elbow that's also inch and a half. Uh, it's what we'll use the entire time and we're gonna elbow down to the very bottom here. Well, not to the very bottom, but about three quarters. And the whole goal here is that the water's being forced to the bottom and as it trickles up, it's going to cascade over our bird netting or our orchard netting for this system. And as it comes to the top, we're then going to go uh, force the water to go out uh, one last time into our, our uh, grow bed from here. All right, so after the water comes up and cascades over all of the bacteria located on our orchard netting, it's going to reach our exit flow here that also is connected with another unisil. Come out through the top here, and all we did is we're going to 90 off here with a much smaller piece, um, and then from here we're going to have our deep water culture bed, and our outflow from the bed is actually going to be on the far end. All right, so we just showed the initial fish tank uh, filling up to the top with the submersible pump lifting the water up. Uh, all we did next was just add some brackets on here to help secure it um, because that's certainly what will happen next uh, is this uh, uh, flimsy pipe right here is going to flop out of the tank and drain all of our water out. So we want to make sure they're good and secured. Uh, we put a, uh, our first little bracket to help take some of the, uh, uh, the pinch off of this uh, air line or this water line. And then we added a little bit more of a curved uh, bracket uh, with a zip tie to really pinch it down good. Uh, and then we'll probably cut it back a little bit more, but the goal is to help uh, give us a little bit of a circular motion. We do make sure that the tip of this is outside of the water at uh, full height because if it is down underneath the water and for whatever reason our power goes out, we certainly can expect a siphon to kick on and instead of the water flowing into the tank, if it's underneath, we can expect the water to siphon out of the tank and that's what we want to make sure that we keep from happening. We also have a little bit of a bracket over here to help with our two six inch air stones. We've got one in each corner right now. Uh, just a little bit of bracket to keep it from sliding out as well. The other thing I want to make sure to notice is that since the last time uh, we had a, the video running, we've added some fish in the tank, but we also added the uh, uh, fish tank nets to help keep our fish from jumping out. They do have a drawstring, which allows us to cinch it down and really keep those fish safely inside of the tank. Okay, so the next thing we uh, wanna make sure we draw your attention to is for this small little system right here, we actually, uh, rather than having a side spillway or anything like that, we just added an additional standpipe in the middle. So the standpipe that we're talking about here uh, is basically an external or a, an additional standpipe. It does have holes drilled down at the bottom right here and it slips over the top of uh, our regular standpipe. This standpipe obviously does not determine the height of the water. What it allows us to do though is as those solids collect down to the bottom, it goes through the holes and it is then forced to go uh, in between this outer standpipe and the internal standpipe before it goes down the drain. This helps us keep our uh, small fish tanks a little bit cleaner um, and it also allows those solids to, uh, to really pull out from the bottom. If we were to take this standpipe off, then the water, of course, as it dribbles into the tank, 
is can just go turn around and go right down my center drain. And I want to effectively allow the solids and any of the water that is settled at the bottom to be pulled up rather than the surface water uh, that is pulled up. Because what comes from here then goes through the filter tanks and we want to make sure that uh, the dirtier of the water uh, actually gets pulled out of the system. All right, so this is our settleable solids filter and then we have the fine solid beside it. All we did was go through and add uh, a couple 90s while well, I did a, a reducer, a couple 90s, and then a couple ball valves here. The way that this project was constructed was that it was going to be a zero exchange system. So all we'll do from here now uh, is just add another um, a little bit of PVC and a little bit of 90s here so that as we open those ball valves, rather than letting any of the, uh, any of the nutrient rich water and any of the solids that's uh, settled to the bottom here go down our drain, we'll then just recapture those, aerate those um, before returning those into our system uh, after a period of days depending on uh, what the project looks like. All right, so the water flows from the um, uh, center drain with the fish tank. And as we, of course, mentioned already, the water uh, 90s and comes to the top right here, uh, which is where we created our baffle. You'll notice that we do have some white uh, foam on top of each of these tanks. We just basically, uh, because we didn't have the covers here, took some of our same uh, uh, dowel board that we used for the plants and actually used these and painted these up nice uh, and created uh, some shade on our, fi our uh, filter tanks uh, and then on our sump tank to help shade out any algae that might grow because we do we are feeding the fish uh, pretty heavily and then we are uh, of course have uh, plenty of sunlight involved as well and that's when we can really get algae to take off so we want to limit sunlight as much as possible so here is our makeshift filter that we ended up creating our makeshift filter is just a, a sheet of acrylic that was purchased at the local hardware store just drilled a couple holes in here and some zip ties, very simple and easy, as well as a little PVC pipe with some end caps on here. If you see, the way it sits down is about two-thirds of the way, uh, about right here, so roughly about two-thirds of the way down. So as that uh, water cascades uh, uh, up at the top of the uh, stand pipe or the one and a half inch uh, pipe overflow that we have here, and we stick this guy down the middle, the water's gonna hit here be forced to go down before it goes into our uh, secondary filter. All right, so our next update, I mentioned and, and sh just showed the clarifier. Now we're going into more of the fine uh, solid settling uh, chamber. To just give you an idea of what we're looking like, uh, we do have a, uh, not a, a real heavy flow, but we do have the water flowing in. And I did mention in the first couple uh, build videos that we did want to tee off and we actually 90 down pretty close to the bottom. So after the, bottom, uh, the water is forced down, um, because it is going to force its way back up to the top because this guy uh, determines the height of the water. So after it tees down and slowly comes back up and cascades over all of our bird netting that we have in here, hopefully a lot of the fine solids are captured uh, before the water flows out and then goes down into our grow beds. We do have a, real, a really small air stone in here just to provide a little bit of oxygen. Uh, because for the most part, we expect uh, uh, to need a lot of nitrification and uh, not necessarily a whole lot of denitrification, uh, but we'll certainly adjust this as we go. But it does provide a little bit of extra oxygen in here. Uh, this bird netting was uh, about an inch or so uh, squared, and then I did uh, the roll that we actually purchased was 30 feet in length, so we just used the entire roll um, uh, here and packed it down pretty good into the column. And then I just took the small air stone and shoved it down a kind in the, a kind of in the middle. I don't want the oxygen uh, absolutely roaring in here uh, because it will just uh, cause my fine solids to stay in suspension and then end up in my grow bed. So I wanted just a small little air stone uh, in there to provide a little bit of oxygen uh, to help us colonize the nitrifying bacteria. Now we've made our way over to the deep water culture beds. Uh, you can see that some of this green lettuce um, was actually sowed on the 20th of September. So we sowed the pelleted seeds on the side. Once they got two, uh, two leaves coming up uh, and it sprouted, uh, we went ahead and transplanted them um, actually last Friday. What you're seeing here is just uh, your common, pretty common green dow board that's about an inch and three quarters here. Uh, this is used for home insulation. What we did was go through and actually paint it uh, a matte white. So we have approximately 28 holes per board. Uh, with the one inch rock wool cubes and then of course we use the one inch hole saw to go through and cut each of these out and of course we did just paint uh, the top side uh, which is white um, but it does uh, give us uh, once again good 
uh, coverage to help limit algae control. So we shifted around here. Uh, all we're going to talk about briefly is that uh, we do have our air pump here, uh, 50 watt air blower providing oxygen to these manifolds. Uh, I only have three airlines running. I've got uh, one running into uh, my fine solid. I have one airline running into my uh, deep water culture bed that also uh, tees off. So I have uh, two air stones in here. And then the bottom one is the uh, airline that's running to the two air stones that's connected into my fish tank. And so uh, if I need a little bit more, I can add some, uh, but the 50 watts certainly isn't uh, that strong. Uh, so we have to be careful with how much we overload uh, on a single system. And then you can also see that we did go ahead and paint the tops of uh, some, of the, uh, some of the board to cover up the sump as well to help limit any light penetration into here, uh, which of course will help limit our algae growth. And then you can see these are fairly clear plastic tanks here, so we're probably going to have to go back behind and paint these white as well.